Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast. My name is David Shockley, and joining me today are... Jimbo Slice. And our special guest... Chris Slayton. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me here today. And once again, making the trek for absolutely no money. Really happy that you could do that. <laughs> absolutely. No problem. Uh, for, those, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Christopher, uh, he's an author and he just released his new book, Chaos Company. So we wanted to bring him on so we could fuck with him. <laughs> so thank you for, for letting us fuck with you here today. Hey, no problem. I'd like to be fucked with, so... Oh, yeah, good. Uh, it's good Thanks when everybody me. has a good fucking session, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's... A, a good fucking session really brings the room together. Just need to bang it out sometimes. That, yeah, just gotta... We're gonna, we're gonna, out. we're gonna leave here today and be like, man, that was a good fuck. That was a good fuck session. <laughs> it's a good thing we already put that explicit title on uh, on iTunes, so that way it gets this out of the way. Oh, nice, nice yeah, no so ramifications. For, we'll just put this title is the good fuck. The good fuck session. That'll be the title. Already. You should have warning not for fucking children. <laughs> just keep them all away. But seriously, though, you shouldn't fuck children. Not for fucking. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start off the, the podcast today the way we started off every podcast thus far, uh, and that's with the shot of liquor. Now, me and Chris are going to do the shot. Are you ready? I'm ready. So, uh, before you take it, now, this is this is Brandy. This was right. actually, this was submitted by a, a listener and dear friend. Uh, his name is Sean, so there's a quick shout out oh, to thank him. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Oh, my God. And I'm the little bitch Ooh, that decided to drink Seagrams oh. instead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, that was terrible. That was bad. If that's, that was horrible. If that's coming from you, I think I would have had the worst time of my life. So the reason that I wanted to, to actually do that shot was because that the bottle, the 750 milliliter bottle that, that mm-hmm. came out of, costs about $5. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, let's see, what's it called? Uh, E&J. E&J Brandy. Have you ever seen that? No. On the bottle. Here, let me go get the bottle real quick. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. So this is the bottle that it came in. It's, it's, it's actually glass. I was pretty impressed. Jeez. And E&J High quality. Nice. And this is how you know, because it says original extra smooth. And yeah, sure. It has a cool little emblem here on the top. It says VS. And it, uh, it tells you what that means. VS means very special. See, I was going to say Victoria's <laughs> Secret. Serious? It says very special. <laughs> it says, uh, oh, and on the back, this is how you know it's really good quality. It says mellowed in aged oak. In a tree? That doesn't say. Just, uh, in aged oak. It sounds like someone forgot it in the barrel. Yeah, it doesn't say. Oh, like, shit. It doesn't say how long. That it, it didn't, did they it didn't just like in, did they just fill a, an oak tree full of it and just left it there? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, it's like aging versus mellowing. Right. It's like I let you, you age wine. If soda is is out for too long, it mellows. Yeah, it comes flat. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's me. So I, I just thought that thing was fucking hysterical. And you said it was what five dollars? Five dollars. Yeah. For this whole thing. And I think you can get like the one point five for like eight. Oh no, that's okay. I was just wondering. I'm not going to get it. I, I don't recommend it. I don't yeah. like it at all. You guys' reaction told it all. Oh, yeah. God. That's going straight to my head. Yeah. That's like, that's brown ethanol. That's what that is. That's I think we'll go straight to the ER. Hello, that darkness, was, uh, my old friend. <laughs> that's hurt, hurt a little bit. The EJR. Yeah. That was painful. <laughs> and, we, I mean, we really have a range here on the on what we're drinking today because that was E&J Brandy, and now we all have Seagram's White Girl Wasted Drinks. Absolutely. Ah, yeah. So, what's mine's black cherry fizz? What's yours? Uh, I have peach fuzzy navel. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, girl. You or go, good. girl. Oh, yeah. I got the wild berries. Wild berries. <laughs> oh. Hell yeah. Spring break. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes all the female listeners. Good. <laughs> this shit's the shit. Yeah. I don't care who it is. Like, I don't even think there's alcohol in this. This shit is the shit. <laughs> David 2017 this shit's the shit <laughs> I actually have a funny story about that Ian and Brandy my friend and, and I'll say, I can, I'll, I'll say their first name so the, the guy who brought it to us his name's Sean uh, he bet our friend uh, Chris not to be confused with our author friend here he says come on man like take a shot of this take a shot of this and he's like I, I don't know I don't really want to take a shot of that because you know it's five dollar Brandy that sounds like you're gonna. I'm just gonna put myself through pain <laughs> and he kept filling up like a scotch glass and he just kept, he filled it up like almost, I'd say a third of the way. So there was a good amount of brandy in there. He goes, just drink this. And he goes, no, I don't want to drink it. And he goes, okay, if you can down that in like two minutes. He put, uh, he filled it up to half of a brandy glass. Okay. He says, if you can finish that whole thing in two minutes, I'll drink that same amount. Ugh. And he was like, okay, sure, I'll do it. No problem. And then for some reason, Sean just kept upping the ante of what he would have to do. 
even though Chris had already accepted the bet. <laughs> oh my god! He's like, he's like, all right, you're fine. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink. I'll drink a little bit more. And he just kept filling up his own glass. Yeah. So if Chris drinks his, his is now a worse than the original. Than the original bet. And he's like, dude, I'm gonna drink it. Just give me a second. Like I'm just finishing my taco real quick. Because <laughs> you don't inter- interrupt a man eating his taco. Oh, absolutely. And you just kept, and so it got to the point where Sean had, I would say. Two thirds of a scotch glass filled with that E and J brandy. Oh, poor poor man. guy. Is he alive now? I don't know. Huh. He was alive <laughs> the last time I saw him. I don't know. How was it that was. time? He's a ticking time bomb. And he probably he, had a few seconds left at that time. You're just, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we were all so confused. We're like, "Stop pouring!" He already said he'd do it. Stop, please. <laughs> oh my god! It hurt to watch him drink it because they fucking drank it all, <sighs> and he was fucking wrecked the whole night. It was terrible. Oh man, poor guy. Oh God! I would say poor guy, but he did it to himself. He did. It to himself, he did it. I guess. You yeah. can't even say like, like, yeah, you totally put yourself into that one. Yeah. That's willingly drinking. I feel like there's much. something else that happened earlier that day. Like he lost his job, girlfriend broke up with him, so <laughs> something like, like hey. that. <laughs> he was doing great. I don't know what the fuck his problem is. What's the worst thing you guys have ever drank? <laughs> oh, besides that, uh, besides that, besides that, um, <laughs> we set the bar. here. You want to go ahead first? All right, have I got? I think I know Jimmy's. What's yours, Jimmy? I want to hear this. Probably. <laughs> Probably fireball now. Fireball, why fireball? I don't know, Dave. Why don't you tell the story? <laughs> you don't remember very much. Of the yeah, story. I don't. <laughs> it was Jimmy's birthday. Eighteenth birthday. We don't. Mind you. I I wasn't counting. I I wasn't after a little bit either. If I can incriminate yourself, <laughs> don't drink underage, kids. Absolutely. Please it's, drink it's a responsibly. Idea to drink underage. Jimmy brought over, came over for for his birthday, and he just drank fireball. What, did you drink fireball the whole night? Oh, damn. It might have been. I think we did. We had two bottles of it. Two of the big bottles. Yeah. Those are the handles. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a such thing called too much of a good thing. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. Of well, a we good thing. we had sent our friend out to just get just get, just get something. Alcohol. Just get a bottle of something. He comes back with like two bagfuls of stuff, right? And we're like, all right. Well, this is a that party. God send. Yeah. <laughs> Go get some booze. And he comes back with two with all the booze. Ba- with all the booze, you're like, that's what oh. you want to keep around. Oh yeah. Uh. So. What happened then? I don't know. I, I, I seriously, I remember. Okay, so he, we're playing flip cup, right? This shows you how drunk he is. Oh my god! Flip cup is flip cup is a very sensitive game. Oh yeah. You, you have the cup upside down. For people who don't know, you have a, a solo cup upside down so that the the top of it is is down, and you just put it over the edge of a table and you try to just flick it and make it go. Is one eighty or three sixty? You gotta make it so it sits upright. So one eighty. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta make it do a one eighty so it's sitting. Unless it's gonna be a show off. You do three sixties. Yeah, which is what I tried to do. I think it's the <laughs> asshole of the team. If he went teams, the, he went for the seven twenty. Oh, seven twenty. Okay. <laughs> he, we're like, okay, Jimmy, come on, let's play this game. Uh, so you're gonna drink your drink, and then you're gonna try to flip it, and we play the whole game to him. He was so trashed. We go, okay, Jimmy, drink, and he drinks it, and he puts it down, and we go, okay, now try to flip it. He looks at it. He's never been more determined for anything in his life. <laughs> he was a tiger stalking his prey. He slams it. He 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 just. I, I can't. I, I did the full windmill swing. <laughs> you, you, yeah, that's what it is. You windmill. Windmill. You just, so you windmill just whacked it. Just yeah. for the win. You yes. just up punched it. Like I was looking he, to hit the ceiling. It was like a Mortal Kombat uppercut. Yeah. But with his hand. <laughs> KO! And the thing hit the fucking ceiling. Obviously. And then I think it landed upright. Like One time. Nice. One time it did that. The yeah. rest of the time I was like, I don't even know what happened. Because he was like, huh. And <laughs> Just ha- we had to go get the cup for him. We just we didn't even want to play the game anymore at that point. We just really liked seeing him do this. Yeah, <laughs> so bad. It was so loud too, especially when I would miss and hit the table. <laughs> oh yeah, because he was slamming the table the whole time he's doing. It. He's like hitting the bottom of the table. Oh, he's probably messing up other people's cups as well. <laughs> the game was that, fucked. That's, yeah, that's it, the plan. The, that was the, the plan game, all along. It wasn't a planned <laughs> finish kind of thing. <laughs> the last thing I remember is when we we're out front. Smoking cigars and passing around the fireball, and you guys were handing it around sip, sip, and they're like, you guys were looked at me like, all right, birthday boy, and I just started chugging. I was, it was like four solid chugs of it. Yeah, that was the last. He that did. was the last one, thing. two, three gulps, dead. Yeah, that was done. The end of it. Done. Everything was a blur. So fireball was yours. Mm-hmm. And then, have you ever drank fireball ever since? No, smelled it, almost threw up. Is that why you're done with hard liquor altogether? That like I've never the been the same after that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was the reason. <laughs> he drank so much he's never drank since. Yeah, that was that was that was at eighteen. Yeah, that, that's bad. Well, that's traumatizing at that point. 
Yeah, that was, it was real bad. That reminds me of my time with Guinness. Oh. Like, I can't drink Guinness anymore. I only had a Guinness sip of Guinness. Yourself. This is how you ruin the Guinness for yourself, because I used to love Irish car bombs. I remember you going through that. <laughs> this was awesome. So, you know what the Irish car bomb is? Oh, yeah. It's a shot filled half with Baileys and half with Jameson, Irish whiskey. And then you drop that shot into an entire pint of, or entire glass of Jameson. And you drink the whole thing all at once. And it's a lot of fun if you're an alcoholic. And one time we were going, it was another friend's birthday, and we were going bar hopping. And I said, for some reason, no, again, nobody bet me to this. This was just something I wanted to fucking wanted to do for some yeah. reason. <laughs> I said, okay, we're going bar hopping. Every time we go to a different bar, I'm going to get another, another Irish car bomb for that every bar. That sounds like a great idea. It, perfect idea. Foolproof, right? Yeah. Nope. So the fourth <laughs> bar... And this is, I also should mention, like, I'm walking up to the bar and I say, I would like an Irish car bomb and whatever I'm going to be drinking that night, whatever beer I'm going to be drinking. So I'm at least eight beers in at this point. And the last one was when I learned about a really interesting power that I have. It's something that my body it takes over. I'm sitting there, I do the Irish car bomb and I get my, my drink. I think it was like Angry Orchards or something. I'm sipping and I'm sipping it. Abby had just rendezvoused with us, my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She rendezvoused with us at this bar and we're sitting there, we're talking. And I take maybe three sips out of this drink and I put it down and I look at Abby and I go, I'm done. Just happy face. I'm done. She says, oh, now. Yep, I'm done. My body has a kill switch. Nice. It was when, it was when my mind was just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're, you're flagged, kid. You're flagged. You're done. After this, it's going to get bad. You might want to get home immediately. And I got home and I just threw up everywhere. It was, it was, it was a goddamn, it was a massacre. It was horrible. And I've never drank an Irish car bomb ever since. Mm. What, what's your worst? Uh, mine's pretty simple. It was, what year was it? It was, uh, Cinco de Mayo, oh, 2013, yeah. <laughs> I think. Going to a friend's house party. Um, it was actually also his housewarming party with him and his, uh, girlfriend, who's now his wife. And they were like, you know, we we're going to do all Mexican stuff. Um, even though it's just, it's everyone of my friends, we were either all white or black. That's it. There were no Mexicans <laughs> there. There were no Mexicans. <laughs> It was racist so, celebration. The, yeah, the, the closest person there was my best friend. He's Puerto Rican. That doesn't even count. So they were like, you know, uh, we got Coronas. Someone else is getting tequila. We got some tacos, some burritos, you know, some chips. <laughs> this we is just the most like, white beer. trash version of Cinco de Mayo. Ever. Yeah. We got some taco. We got some Taco Bell. We got Coronas. That's Mexican, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so we had all this stuff and they were like, we need some extra beers. Can you go get another beer that's not Corona, but, uh, you know, from Mexico? And I was like, I got you. I didn't know that was code for get Modelo. Apparently, that's like the second best Mexican beer we have here I in the U.S. And I didn't. I got a beer on sale called Tecate. And I don't know if you ever drank Tecate before. I'm pretty sure the distributor just pisses in the can. <laughs> and oh, man. Seals it. And I was like, oh, you know what? That's 10 bucks. Let me get two 30 packs. Everyone hated me by the end of the night, long story short. Oh, I was like, oh, man. this is horrible. Like, where did you get this from? Like, a bodega? Like, or. <laughs> <laughs> you find this in the far, far back of a liquor store? It's really bad. You it just was had like, a Mexican guy piss into the bottle. Basically. <laughs> So that's the worst thing ever. That's the worst thing ever. That made me throw up. It just made me feel bad about myself the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, man. You, your soul had a hangover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's bad. Yeah. Yikes. So uh, did you guys hear about this uh, on Reddit? Are you guys familiar with it? There's a subreddit called Roast Me. R slash Roast Me. Oh, yeah. yeah I've heard of it. It's kind of popular a few months ago, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it, or it, game popular a few months ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there was a really interesting one where this absolute, this like kind of wannabe Instagram model went on there and she posted on roast me and for people who don't know roast me is a place where you post a picture of yourself and you go roast me like make fun of me like tear me apart i don't know what convinces people to do this but they do it and that's that's whatever this girl goes on there and again beautiful woman kind of like, like i said that one of the instagram model yeah kind yeah of thing. there's a lot nowadays yeah yeah so she had like big boobs and, and she has like you know brunette and a lot of makeup whatever mm -hmm. they fucking decimated her <laughs> i'm telling you she made an account six hours later was deleted oh <laughs> the people on there on that subreddit are just downright savages so yeah. i've printed out some examples for what was said because <laughs> i went on there and it was fucking gold <laughs> and this is what made it worse is that she was getting berated and she was like trying to reply to the comments Oh, oh no, you never. Oh, she was feeding it. No, you never want to do that. Oh, no. I, I know one thing about the internet. I'm, I'm not too internet or tech savvy, but I know you don't mess with internet bullies 
they will ruin you. Mm-hmm. You'll That's never what they win. want. They want that attention. Exactly. They will troll you and they will ruin you and make you cry at home. <laughs> It hasn't happened to me. I just, I just. I'm sure that's exactly what she did. Yeah. And and even after she deleted her account, she had made a new account and she was like still, supposedly, still PMing people that were posting her picture, which is still up there. Oh, my goodness. So uh, these are some examples of what was said. You should list your Photoshop experience on your job resume. Dang. You are the definition of a depreciating asset. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dang. And uh, the, I will say that there was a reply to that comment and it said. I'm an accountant, and I appreciate that asset. <laughs> <laughs> I'd roast you, but I don't have the three hundred and fifty dollars you charge per hour. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> that ring light you used for your selfie makes your eyes and narcissism really pop. <laughs> don't let all these comments get you down. You will make some kind of well-off guy a wonderful participation trophy wife someday. Oh, oh no! <laughs> That sounded good until the participation it just slid no in one, there. No one wants those. Oh, it just slid right in there. Oh. Too bad there's no kind of surgery that can make you smarter or more interesting. Oh. <laughs> My God. I don't know why you insist on doing Q&A videos on Instagram. No one gives a shit. We follow you because you're hot, but you're not interesting. Stop deluding yourself. <laughs> you're in for a ride here. Welcome to the podcast. Oh. <laughs> Sex dolls have become so realistic these days. Uh, you're, this is my favorite. <laughs> you're one of those girls that I'd come across on Instagram. Remember that I'm horny, and then go and find actual hot ones to jerk off to. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> oh god! That's not cleavage. It's the Silicon Valley. Oh. That's good. Oh, That's good. Cringe. It was a good week on it on Reddit. <laughs> I've never seen this girl or looked at her account, but I feel like that last joke she would not get. <laughs> you know? It's a double entendre. She, yeah. like, what's a double entendre? <laughs> it's good. Sounds like enchilada. <laughs> yeah, right? Sounds like enchilada. <laughs> Yo guys, what do you guys want to get talk about after this now? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh so what have you guys been up to recently? Ah, uh, man. I've been, I've been, you know, browsing and stalking people on Reddit. What about you? <laughs> Hopefully doing something productive. Uh, driving back and forth from New York in a day. Fuck, really? Yeah. Fuck that. Had an emergency come up and I had to drive up past Long Island, just past Long Island, New York, six hours to get there and four hours back in Jeez. a day. I had to leave work early at like 230 and I didn't get home till like one o'clock in the morning. Motherfuckers, Jeez, man! Yeah. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's all good now. But yeah, it was like, whew, it was a tough one. Talk it was that. a tough one, especially with New York traffic. Oh my god, yeah. torturous. Yeah, New York traffic's bad. What would you say that New York people drive worse or or better than than us here? They're more aggressive. Way? More aggressive? Oh yeah. Because that always bugs me when people are overly aggressive when they don't need to be on the road. Oh yeah. They're like I was coming yeah. at you in. Well, that's the thing. The, the way the New York drivers do is they put their turn signal on, and if like you're like right w- in their blind spot, like because you're stuck that way, they don't care. They'll just squeeze their way in. Like they'll just go over. It's not that they'll wait for you. You don't. They don't yield to you. You yield to them coming uh, into your lane, kind of thing. That makes sense. That's that's how the, they all operate. They it just- was. Does that switch and yield? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it was. With all that traffic, you kind of have to, or else you never get over it. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. I always imagine New York City as being so gridlocked that you can't get anywhere. I- I've never driven in New York City, thank God. Well, we actually, thankfully, I never was in the heart of the city. Like, I drove kind of like around the outskirts of it. Mm. Like, I could see the skyline and all that stuff, but I never went into the city. I was like, Jimmy, what have you been up to? Driving. <laughs> yeah, driving. Fuck that. <laughs> And I guess we're pretty lucky because we live here in Delaware, so like we're we're around a bunch of cool shit. Like we're we're right near New York and Philly and Jersey yeah, we got Rome. we got a lot around us. Just so visit. <laughs> yeah, we can just visit. We're like they're all in, within a day trip kind of thing. We're like yeah. built-in tourists, right? Basically. Everywhere we go, we're tourists. I used to drive in Manhattan twice a year for martial arts tournaments. Oh and man, it was on a Sunday and it was horrible. Like whenever you go in, there's traffic. When you're trying to leave, there's traffic. That being said, I still hate Philly drivers more. Wow. Uh, I think they're horrible people. Jeez. Uh, I hope none of them are listening. There goes your like. <laughs> there goes our fans. Philly fans. Yep, there goes your Philly fans. Sorry, but um, I'm from Philly, you prick. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I didn't drive there, so I didn't drive now. Yeah, oh uh, man, I got. I remember last year I was, I was training for the Spartan race, right? 
and I couldn't go because I got in a car accident in Philly. Jeez. And this girl hit my car, and she was texting while driving. And, you know, the cops, the fire department show up, and they're like, you know, like, hey, is everyone okay? What happened? She's like, I don't know. My brakes don't work. Like, don't work because you're sitting in a smiley face on someone, you bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I kid you not, four months after that, no, four weeks after that, I got my car back. Two months after I got my car back, got hit again in Philly. God damn. This time from a woman that didn't know what a yield sign meant. <laughs> so I yielded. She did not. Wow. Jeez. So maybe it's not all drivers in Philly. Maybe it's just the women in Philly. I don't know. But either oh. way, I don't like Philly drivers. They treat driving up there like Mario Kart. Regar- <laughs> <laughs> all they're missing are green shells. <laughs> yeah, right. You want to blue shell the fuck out of them one day. Oh, yeah. Oh, that blue shell. Mm. Just banana the hell out of them every single time. Have you been playing? Uh, what games have you been playing recently? Since we're talking about Mario Kart, Oh, uh, you know what? I don't play Mario Kart that much anymore. I like the friends I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> it gets intense. It's really intense. It's, um, it's like Monopoly level friend ending. Oh, oh yeah, potential. Oh, if yes. you knock someone off that Star Road, mm. you know Rainbow Road, you just lost a friend. Yeah, you never forgive mm. that person. Oh yeah, you you wrote him out of the will. Yep. That Mario Party. They'll stab you in the back in real life for that shit. Mm-hmm. But um, right now I'm playing Rainbow Six Siege with my friends. Uh, it's a tactical shooter game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, very high stakes. Like in Call of Duty, you can just jump from like one place to the other. It's very unrealistic. Oh and God. Rainbow Six Siege, you get shot once and then it's over. You got to wait until the you know the next round picks oh, up. Shit. So wow, it's a lot of fun. I like it. That's I thought like that would be a lot of fun, and then I would just rage quit one day, and never play again. Like, um, that's fun yeah, until it's happen. infuriating. Yeah. Right. It's, it's infuriating because, like, you have to work as a team. That's the only way you're going to get through any round is if you work as a team. The second someone runs off and tries to be a hero, you know, they get hit, they die, and it's just like, it's like a domino effect, and everyone dies because... Oh, wow. You're you, fighting you, with a man down. Yeah, you're fighting with a man down. You need your team to win. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, cool. Wow. How about you, Jimmy? Where are you playing right now? I have lately actually been grinding on Skyrim. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I've been nice. going back to Skyrim. Oh, I love that game. I When it came out, you know, when it was like the game to have, like on the 360 and the PS3, mm-hmm. I must have put months into that game, like consecutively almost. It was... It's a great... It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. I remember like, when it came out, I was in college, senior year of college. It came out, I think, two weeks before finals. Oh, oh yeah, and so many people were so pissed, but the dedicated people just didn't show up to class, what? and they were playing. One of my, my roommates was one of those guys. Like he played all night and hear him playing. I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch! Like I want to play it. it sounds like but I need to wait until finals are over. Right, it's fun. I'm actually playing Skyrim too. Are you? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. We're trying to. Me and Abby are trying to platinum it. Oh, and we're good like luck. three achievements away. Fuck! I'm fucking I'm glad you fucking mentioned this. Platinum it. Oh, okay, get, get the platinum trophy. All, all yeah. the trophies, gotcha. yeah. We're on, we're pl- I played on PS3. Okay. So we're just trying to get all the achievements right. for, for Skyrim. Because I did it for Oblivion. Mm-hmm. I still play Oblivion. Oblivion was great. The little bit that I did play, but... So fuck Skyrim for this. The Oblivion Walker achievement, which is to get all the Daedric Artifacts. But it doesn't say get all the Daedric Artifacts. It says get 15 Daedric Artifacts, which is all the Daedric Artifacts. But there's one Daedric quest where you can potentially get two. So I think they patched it where you can still get the two, but they fucked with the achievement. So now you need to get both in order to get the fucking achievement. Oh. You have to do the, that quest a certain way. I didn't fucking know that. I was like, I just got to do it the once. And everything. I, and I even like followed like guides for it because mm-hmm. I want I want to do this right. Because there's some quests where you can do it a certain way where you don't get a, a Daedric artifact. So I fucking got every one. I got a fucking Daedric artifact. Eh. A Daedric artifact for all of them. I still didn't get the fucking achievement. Oh, that sucks. Uh, so we Skyrim? have to start over the entire thing, or so I reloaded. Okay. So now I have ten quests to go, and I <sighs> fucking hate everything. I, I haven't touched it since, uh-huh. but I have to get it. What are you doing in Skyrim? Right now, I've been I, I've been kind of just working on because like I got the special edition. Wait, that the one we can fly <laughs> like the dragons. Uh, that's the one where I can get the mod for that. Okay, okay. I have the remastered for the PS4. Which also includes all of the DLC with it. Mm. I heard that one looks really good. Does it look good? It does look very nice. Yeah. It, it Only in certain parts of Skyrim you really see it. But other parts... Because, you know, the color, the color scaling in it is very... Uh, it's still gray and darker gray. Still gray and dark. So, insert like if you go to like the, the greener parts of Skyrim, then you really, really notice it. But like 
in this most of the snowy parts you know just looks almost the same gray blocks yeah so i've been actually working on building my house because one of the dlc's heart fire is you can you can buy a plot of land build your house up and you can actually adopt children and that's so a- in a game where you can literally <laughs> fight dragons. I've been doing that too. You, you decide you're to living get life. Yeah, you're living. You're, you're playing The Sims. Well, because like I want somewhere to put all of my stuff that I pick up on quests, so I put it into the house. That I keep sounds it there. like what parents so, in real life do with children. They yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, I don't. Know, I don't it. have any children in the house. I just have you know your companion Lydia, Lydia the house. Oh, call. Lydia. You can I make her. Lydia. You can make her the steward of the house. Lydia is my side bitch. Yeah. No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Lydia's my long con. I just married Lydia. <laughs> Did Cause, you? Because I one of the achievements is to get is to marry somebody. Okay. Yeah. And so I married Lydia because I was like, she's been there the whole fucking game. Yeah, right. She's, bad. she's been there yeah. for you, carrying your shit. She cares, obviously. Yeah. She got a fucking mouth on her. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. I, this is what I remember because uh, <laughs> people that have never played Skyrim, they fucking hate this conversation. They're waiting for this to end. But if you give her, if you you can ask her to hold stuff for you, mm-hmm. and she goes. I'm sworn to carry your burdens. And she says it just like that. She's got this fucking... It's like, don't you fucking sass me, Lydia. I'm screaming at my TV. <laughs> I remember one time um, when I played it, the one time I, I ever played Skyrim all the way through, I lost Lydia in this tunnel. And I didn't realize I lost her until I had already saved the game because I was about to fight, you know, the boss in this huge tunnel. And I lost her. I figure, you know, like this... I think it was like eight different like floors okay in this in this cavern in this like cavern slash tunnel place and i just figured you know lydia's not the smartest chick in that in that game I'm like oh, she probably fell off you know on the top floor on her way down <laughs> oh no and so, yeah she's, she's probably dead i didn't see her i don't know if there's a button or not we could recall her or anything like that i don't think so but, i don't um, think so yeah no. I don't, but I, I couldn't find her i couldn't i don't know what to do so i just kept going kept going you know got to the end fought the boss one nice thing, by the way, is I don't know if you guys know this, is when you fight those bosses in Skyrim, you can just stand outside the room and shoot them. It's great. It's oh, <laughs> really? I, I actually yeah. noticed that in this you. playthrough when it was, you know, you guys, uh, if you've done the companions, you know, the werewolves one. Yeah, yeah, yeah the werewolf one, yeah. Wait, the one mission where you have to go in and you fight that giant centurion or whatever? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a few like that. Sorry, I'm perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that one, I always started with the companion, so I was like, you know, like level six or something, and you fight this centurion that all he does is just blow air on you, and you're dead like instantly. And he burp like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He literally just burps on you, and then you you die. Yeah. Um. But he's so big, he can't fit through the cave leak going into his room. And yep. I was like, man, I feel like such a cheater, but you know what? Yep. Fuck, like, you gotta do it. Yeah, I was like, I'm cheesing the hell out just of this. Just the world's worst door to door salesman. We're the best. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I remember I, I, I killed a person like that. You know, like, uh, the way Skyrim works is, like, the exit is always near the boss for some reason, even though the entrance is, like, miles away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And somehow they're, like, right next There's to each other There's a secret exit. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I got to the exit, and right before I got left the exit, Lydia was right there giving me a bitch face. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like, giving you that sass. Yeah, and I was like, how did you get, you know, past the boss? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. But I'm glad you're here. I found a shield. I need you to hold this for me. So, if you, oh, man. If you could. Yeah. If you, well, wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, my lady. Yeah. <laughs> well, in Oblivion, once you got to the very end of, like, a dungeon or whatever, didn't you have to go all the way back up? Yeah. Like, there wasn't a secret exit, like, in Skyrim, you had to go all that's probably, the way back. Yeah, that's probably why they, that's probably some why they did that. Some, some of them complain. actually had them in Oblivion. It was like, some, it seemed like there was an idea that they were playing with in, in Oblivion. Yeah. And then in Skyrim, like, everyone had Everyone them. had them, yeah. yeah. It was really cool. I every like every cavern is like the end of National uh, Treasure. Remember that shit? <laughs> At the end, it was like, hey, can you find a way out? I don't know. Come on, try. Yeah, there's a door right there. Thanks, Nick Cage. Thanks, Nick Cage. I rented a U-Haul van, <laughs> or not a U-Haul van, but like a U-Haul trailer, but it has to be a motorcycle trailer because I need it for my motorcycle to, to get it fixed. And I swear to God, the guy who rented it to me, it's fucking Nicolas Cage. <laughs> the guy looked just like him. It was like, I walked in, I was like, oh yes, he- hello, I'm looking, you know, I, I was here for to rent that. And he turns around, I went, uh, y- yeah, I'm sorry. Like, like, I actually took a- Was he wearing a leather jacket? No, he was wearing normal fucking Nicolas Cage clothes. I mean, I haven't seen him in movies, so yeah, he could be a U-Haul guy. I feel like in a lot of his movies, he's actually wearing a leather jacket of some sort. He is. (laughs) (laughs) Did you guys see the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie? 
have not. I haven't seen the first one, so. Oh, you didn't see the first one? Oh, really? One? Yeah. I hear so much about it, and it's just like, I need to finally sit down and start watching Marvel movies. The Space Avengers. Yeah. yeah. Considered one of the better like Marvel movies. One yeah. One of the better Mar- uh, superhero movies, actually. I hear the soundtrack is spectacular. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it's great. really good. Yeah, but I haven't seen the second one yet. I might actually go see it this weekend. It takes fucking forever. The second one? Two and a half hours. Holy oh, God. God. And you know you're going to watch the... The, the, the credits. after credits. Yeah, the after it's after not even like, you're like oh, I cut out ten minutes early. Yep. You gotta watch. You fucking embrace it. I heard Sylvester Stallone's in it. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Stallone's yeah. in there. He's got he's got a, a little. Uh, it's almost like an extended cameo. It feels like oh, okay. Or like he gets this little spot. I think they're gonna <laughs> after seeing him in there. Because when I watched it, I was like <laughs> Stallone. What the fuck are you doing here? And then so he gets like a shot. So he only gets like two little scenes. So I think they're trying to set up for like another movie. Probably. My question is, did he box anybody? He didn't box anybody. Else. No, he's not a space boxer. Damn. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Was Stanley? In there, of course, Stanley was in. There. Hey, I, I have to ask because you know is Stanley he, dead? Hey, it was rumored he, that he was really sick. No, really? He yeah. Oh, he, he has actually has a really big cameo in this one. Oh, does he? Very oh. noticeable. Wow. Is it, uh, do you know what? I'm, I was gonna guess, but I don't want you to ruin it for me. No, no, no. no you, you'll see it. All right. It's really cool. It's it's best to see it. I really wish you guys would would have saw it that way. We could have talked about it, but never mind. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. so sorry. Losers. <laughs> yeah, darn. <laughs> So, um, How about we pause it right now and then we'll go watch it? Yeah, pause. Back. Oh man, that movie was great! Oh, it was oh. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That ending, that ending was incredible. That ending, see that coming. such a twist. <laughs> you will not believe what Groot says. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. Apparently, I looked up the credits for the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Vin Diesel does obviously. Vin Diesel is Groot. He does the voice of Groot, which is to me sounds like the easiest fucking gig in the world. Mm-hmm. Easiest voice acting gig. And I think he does every line individually in the movie, and he does it for all of the translations as well, for the DVDs and like the the. I'm confused. So like, that is a lot. I am really confused. I would think he's <laughs> so like so when they release Guardians of the Galaxy in Spanish, uh, okay. it's actually Vin Diesel doing "Me amo Groot." Oh, wow. <laughs> interesting. But he earned that fucking paycheck. He yeah. knew it was an easy gig, and he still helped them out. That's pretty cool. Wow, I got a little respect for Vin Diesel. I think he's isn't he bisexual? I have no. Clue I know on. he's been spotted at like, con- you know, conventions, uh, like gay conventions. It stuff. takes the Need for Speed movies to a totally different level. Knowing that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you mean like Fast and the Furious? Oh but, yeah. no! <laughs> Need for Speed's the awesome video game. No, you're right. <laughs> but uh, was it, yeah, Fast and the Furious. Yeah. 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 I heard rumors about about him like being bisexual, but I really looked into it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't really care as long as he keeps cranking out those Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. <care. laughs> Vin Diesel's greatest thing is just taking your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 totes uh-huh yeah see personally i like uh i like the rock how did he get that big <laughs> how do you think come on <laughs> have you guys seen his high school picture no <laughs> he looks jacked even then <laughs> he's always been that huge did he just come out of his mother like that jacked 50 like pound baby probably <laughs> she had to give birth twice like four different <laughs> times <laughs> <laughs> one for each bicep <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there's the left there's the right get those traps <laughs> oh we gotta get those calves <laughs> god that guy's just fucking huge like people shouldn't be that big like you see there's yeah. like it's just... Well, have you seen what Arnold Schwarzenegger used to look like? Fuck yeah. He was bigger. <laughs> was he? Oh, he was yeah, huge. Um, the gym I, I go to, the training center, it's actually down the street from your place, man. Sometimes, like, throughout the week, they'll have a recurring DVD called Pumping Iron. It's one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's, like, biggest movies about how he trains, how he lifts weights. Hmm. And he is huge. Yeah. Just huge. It was, like, eight-hour training sessions of just cool. lifting. It's crazy. And when he's not lifting, he's lying down stretching because of how much of a toll it took on his body. Right. Wow. It's incredible. Drinking protein shakes. Yeah. So I got a chance to see... Uh, I got a picture with the Stanley Cup. The, really? The oh, did you? Yeah. That's awesome. I got a picture at, at work. They let us see it. And Lucky. There was a guy. and He was credited while we, while we went and saw it and we got a picture with it and all that. There's a guy whose sole job is the cup holder. Mm-hmm. Or the cup handler. His name's like Pierre something, I think. I looked it up. He's very French. That man makes $175,000 a year. Just to carry the cup. That's pretty awesome. Carries the cup around, polishes it. It's it's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. He he has a security team. If you drop it, though. (laughs) Don't drop it. You're never going to work anywhere again. (laughs) You get a job at Walgreens if you dropped it. 
how many when's the last time you dropped something jimmy uh walking here really yes <laughs> you can never get that job when's the last time you dropped something chris Ah, uh, i can't even think about the last time i dropped something You're right because you hold on to things yeah because you when, when you go to pick up something you understand it's a reasonable expectation of how much it's going to take to carry that like you don't drop a lot of shit. Why the fuck would you drop? The but do you think? Do you think I purposely drop something? Like mm. accidents happen. Accidents happen. But but you gotta think. You took. You take extra care if you were handling something that that. You know, if I was that guy, I would well, just obviously yeah. handle to my my wrist. Yeah. Just call it a day. <laughs> you you guys think he ever drinks out of it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know the I people would, that oh. win the Stanley Cup. Like that's the tradition. When they win the Stanley Cup, they pass it around and stuff. People will drink beer out of that Stanley Cup. No, oh, it's a tradition that. that's that they pretty do, nice. Yeah. But I mean, like the handler, like you know, oh. he's sneaking a few drinks every couple. Of <laughs> probably he's probably dropping a couple shots oh, in man. there. Oh, I totally would. That's how he gets the girls too. Like, oh, <laughs> what, oh yeah, Stanley Cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know that he's named his dick the Stanley Cup. <laughs> that's how he gets them. Oh that's yeah, his move. <laughs> the reason I bring it up is because this guy, I don't think it was him or if it was like another handler that was there. People are like going around and are getting pictures with it, but the, you're very cautious, obviously. They don't want to touch it and they're trying to be very respectful about it. And he's like, get in there, touch it, like, like grab it. People pay good money to do this. Like this guy was like, he was so game. He was like this cup's hype man. Yeah. Fuck the cup holder job. I want the hype man for the Stanley Cup. I need that guy. It was like a pre- like guy just pressuring you to do something wrong. Yeah, he's like, just, just touch it. Feel it. You'll never get the Just throw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love that guy. He was my favorite. Oh my God. He was my favorite guy. He's like, just fucking do it. And get like, in there. Get in there. That's some deep black. <laughs> Jump in it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a bath with it. <laughs> and fun fact, the Stanley Cup will hold 23 beers. 23? Oh. 23. And wow. that's also equivalent to, I think it's, fuck. I'm going to fuck up this statistic. I think it's like 5.45 bottles of wine. And not the normal bottles, the big boys. The family's bottle. Holy, the family size. Oh, okay. Holy shit. 1.5 liters. Jesus. Yeah. I would, I would. I don't like wine, so that wouldn't, I'll pick that wouldn't apply. That, <laughs> that right? would not apply yeah. to me. I was trying to think. I said, "Can we?" Because he was like, "He's like, just touch it. Like, get, like, hold." <laughs> or he didn't say hold it, but he, he's like, "Just touch it. Put your hands on. It. It's okay." And I was like, "Can I hold it?" And they're like, "Don't hold it. Stop there. Do it. <laughs> we will draw the line there. <laughs> you can touch it, but if you hold it, I'll tase you. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll definitely drop it. Yeah. Yeah. Very fine line. And then the drop. Then the, the cup holder. Now he has him explaining to do. Yeah. <laughs> Why there's a dent in it. <laughs> and there truly is only one. Yeah. Um, and they engrave all the names of the people that want it. And it's the, t- it's it's the tiniest so t- font like ever. You'd probably, it's the names? Are those yeah, teams? of every... No, I think it's every... It's the team, and then it has the... some like I don't know if it's the whole roster, or it's the p- actual... Pl- like, the ones that actually have played. That's what the ring's for. Yeah. yeah well, they get a, a ring, too. They have to be, like, microscopic. I don't think people yeah, are they're, like they're small. Them. They're tiny, yeah. yeah. I was there. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Fun fact as well, going off of that, the Boston Bruins, when they won the Stanley Cup, I believe was two or th- three years ago, I believe, they set a record for the most expensive night out at a bar. They spent, it was like over $50,000 at a bar. Holy shit. Yeah. And I like they had a picture of the receipt, like mm-hmm. every part of the receipt, <laughs> and they were buying like three hundred dollar shots, shots, just one shot, three hundred dollars. What? Yeah. What's it shot of? Solid gold? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Wondering shot of solid gold. They, Fuck it. Why they, not? They, oh, yeah. they drank it out of a gold cup. Like, they, <laughs> I want to know what drink costs three hundred dollars, so I can never order that. <laughs> right. I hope it was. It was like silly. bottle, like like t- Grey Goose. Yeah. It's like a normal bottle of Grey Goose. <laughs> Something like With sparkling stash. stuff in it. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's the mm. most expensive drink I've ever drank. I think I think the most expensive thing I've ever had, like drank, was probably like some like top shelf Jameson. Or, oh, you know what? I had Red Breast, which is uh, Irish whiskey. Red Boob? Yeah, Red Boob. I had um, <laughs> Johnny Walker, which everyone is like $200. Jeez. Holy I think it's like Blue Label. Maybe it's Blue Label. No, Blue Label is the most expensive one. I think that's like a... Like seven hundred, maybe a oh. thousand. Maybe that green is, label then. Maybe green, red, one of those. No, green, black, one of those. 
Yeah. I think Black Label is not that bad. Yeah, I think yeah, Black Label might be the least expensive one, mm-hmm. I think. So mm-hmm. maybe it's red or green. Probably green. I've, yeah. I've seen the red label around as well. Which I don't, I don't get why they do like black, red, green, gold, and then blue. That doesn't make sense to me. There, there's not, yeah, there, this this tier system is all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading my notes here. <laughs> <laughs> but feel free. Was there anything you guys want to talk about? Anything any, anything that's been grinding your gears? Anything that's been pissing you off recently? What's been grinding my mm. gears? Yeah. I don't know. Because like this is my really? life. My life just goes from one anger to the next. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I got one. All right. So. I usually don't go to these that often, but like, you know, my friend is in a, is in a band. He's got this one bandmate. He just, it's under my skin. Every single little thing he does, he's one of those people that no matter what he does, it could be the most innocent thing that he's ever done, but it just irks you. He just finds a way to get under your skin with dumb shit. He, he, no, I don't think he he doesn't try to. He just does (laughs) because... That's professional. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. He's a real sleazy kind of guy. He, like okay. he's. Can we give him a name? Literally, you can pick any name, just not his name. Or just say what it rhymes with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, call him Carl. All right, we'll call him Carl. Fuck his name's Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> so Carl, he's he's real. He's one of those guys where he won't refer to women like as girls or women, he refers to them in the most derogatory way. And it's worse than bitches. He will call them the pussy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes, oh. the pussy. That's like oh. going out of your way to be offensive. Yeah, oh, that, that oh yeah. Going out like, of your way. He, and there's he, even like KKK racists that are like, that's a little far. Yeah. yeah. And this dude brags about having a list, a checklist of the different ethnicities of women that he wants to sleep with. I'm glad you said once to and not has already, because this guy sounds like a fucking tool. Yeah, he sounds horrible. Big time. Not he sounds to m- like someone that you should have drinks with, and you punch him in the face and blame him on the alcohol. Uh, <laughs> if you can't do it, you know, sober with a good reason. The temptation has been unreal. <laughs> anyway, there's this... <laughs> what do you do? We're, we're at the house, you know, getting, like, all the band equipment together. Like, I was just helping out because I was there one day. And he just walks outside, and he's, like, on the phone for a little bit. He comes back, and he's like... Ah, ah, sorry guys, that was that. Talking to the pussy. <laughs> oh, God. I, I was just, I just... Is looked. that how he talks, by, by the way? Uh-huh. Like, like Exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry guys, I was uh, talking to the pussy. That's reason enough for me to want to yeah. punch him. Let me tell you, that's oh, man. It's horrible. I, I just, I just started laughing at him. Like, I just laughed in his face. <laughs> exactly. And I think he actually took it like, oh, bro, like, that's so cool. No, I was laughing at him. Yeah. Oh, fuck And that. he always, like... It seems like he always makes a move on every single woman he sees. Whether he knows that, you know, the boyfriend is right there or not, he makes a move on him. And in some way, shape, or form. Is he part of this band? He is. He is the guitarist. Oh, okay. Damn it. <laughs> and he, That's he's important. He, I he, was a cowboy he likes guy. to have the camera on him. So like on stage, like the singer's like trying to put on a performance and he steps right in front of him. Oh. Uh-huh. And he like tries to walk around, like playing the guitar, and I'm like <sighs> You're, he, you're playing he, in a small bar in Delaware. You are not in the freaking. You're you're not playing in Philly right now, man. Jeez, sounds like someone needs to replace him. He's a he's the biggest tool okay. bag. You guys want another drink? You just describing this guy makes you want to find him. I'll, I'll pay good money to go uh, to you the want, bar and hit him <laughs> or throw some shit. Yeah, you you won't have to look very hard. He he likes to make himself well known. So mm. thank you. Try to at least. There you go. Thank you, Dave. Uh-huh. Appreciate it. I got one for myself. I'm not done mine yet, um, but I will be. Random thought. You guys know that song from Rag and Bone Man, Human, right? What is it? Human from Rag and Bone Man. Pretty big song right now. Some, uh, uh-uh. I'm only human. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I just never knew the name of the song. Yeah. I've random thought. It. Every time I hear it, I get flashes of thinking about Krillin and Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> because no. the song's all about, like, you know, you blame yourself for bad things that have happened. <laughs> you're you're not perfect. You're only human. You know, you can't, you, can't, you can't do that much. I automatically think of Krillin every time, and I laugh <laughs> when I hear the song on the radio. Because <laughs> they die all the time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't really do shit. <laughs> Actually, that goes really well into our next segment. Are you ready? Yes. We got a user submitted question. Woo! Woo! Number one. Somebody listens. Moving on up. So uh, this question comes from uh, listener Morgan Miller, and she asks, what is your hype song? So Jimmy, what's your hype song? 
see. I I kind of had like my own playlist. Like when I was like in high school, I was you know I was playing baseball and like you know the the typical going to a bit ba- going on the way to a game. Listen to the song that hypes you up for the game, gets you ready. I think can only really think of one that r- really stuck out in my mind. Well, I can think of two actually, but one in particular was actually Question by System of a Down. Really? Yeah. That it's such an song. unusual song for a lot of people. But that one, I just, for me, the drums in that song really get me going. Like, really get the blood flowing, gets me going. Nice. Yeah. All right, cool. Chris, what's yours? Which hype song? Um, I'm going to start with the a- blood flowing. I'm going to start with uh, my hype song I'm listening to right now. I'm going to go with my favorite. Is that all right? Absolutely. So the hype song I am listening to right now from indie rapper Tech 9 Okay, yeah. I've heard of Tech 9 yeah, yeah, he's been around for a while. I just love the guy's work. I love his flow as a rapper, just how like how fast he can rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a song called Speed Em out. I think it came out like December 2015, but I just got into it last year. And it's him... Uh, I don't want to get the guy's name incorrect. I think it was uh, someone from his label. I don't want to say the name because I don't want to, you know, right. say it incorrectly. But uh, it was Tech Nine, uh, someone from his label, and Eminem. And I've loved Eminem since he's came out. And like he just, it's it's one of those songs where he just goes off. Mm-hmm. Oh like, yeah. Usually artists, what they do is any any musical artist, they'll have someone featured in their song, but you know the the person that's uh whose song it is, they always have the best part. They always make sure they have the best part. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this song, it's without a doubt Eminem oh, just Morty. killed it. Oh well, yeah, straight up because that's it. what he does best. You know, if you didn't give him that, yeah, it's not Eminem. Exactly, it's not him. It was great. And my my hype song of all time is my favorite band, Disturbed. Uh, one of the first songs ever called Voices. Um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. God, I've listened to Disturbed it forever. Yeah. I actually saw them twice last year. Really? Wow. Yeah, one time Holy in Baltimore, uh, another time at the MM Barbecue. Oh, and when I saw them at the MM barbecue, it was like pouring rain. We were on the lawn. We didn't get tickets. We got tickets the night before. So we were on the lawn. We weren't getting inside the pavilion. And me and my best friend, Edwin, we uh we moved our way all the way up into the pavilion. People started leaving because the storm was just that bad. And I'm like, no, I don't care if I saw all disturbed last month. I want to see them again. You want to see you gotta have it happen. And yeah, and they had flashing lights, fire all over the place. You know, the lightning was also like, you know, in the backdrop. Oh, cool. Pouring rain. And as soon as like the fire and the lights were flashing. Me and him just scaled the walls, got right past security, what? and enjoyed the rest of the performance of Disturbed. <sighs> oh, oh my god! It was so much fun, and they played voices as well. I think that's what they started off with. That's hardcore, man. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. That's a good hype song. Oh yeah, it's a good Love experience it. overall. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Fucking right. Mine is a. Uh, I was like thinking about this this a little bit. I like songs that can be sung along to. Like, I was like, Build Me a Buttercup, that classic song. Build me up, build me a buttercup. <laughs> but that's not song. my hype song. But I love that song. I like songs like that. That always gets me really motivated. <laughs> and then I had it. Goldfinger, Superman. By who? Goldfinger. Oh. oh. So if anybody here has ever played okay. Tony Hawk 1, oh, it was yeah. the first song you heard. Yeah. Oh, I know that song. That used to be my... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm, I got it now. I had to come back to me. That, that was probably was the last time I heard that song. For yeah. No lie, that, that song was on my workout playlist all last summer. <laughs> really? It's a good song. It's a fucking good song. Yeah. yeah. Bring you right back. Yep. The last time I heard Thinking Goldfinger was the Superman. cover that they did, 99 Red Balloons. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the last one I've heard of them. Yeah, they haven't had much since, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good song. <laughs> yeah. Great Scott song. I like Scott music in general. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm getting into it recently. But there you go, Morgan Miller. Now you know what our favorite hype songs are. Oh, yes. So I want to talk to you about your book. All right. Yeah, we probably should. We should do that, <laughs> being that you're here. All right, we should probably it. talk about something relevant and not just get drunk in a room and talk to ourselves. <laughs> Instead of just jerk ourselves off. <laughs> that so, comes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't finished yet. Yeah. <laughs> We finish after we do a post show and we just we just we do like a what's what's the thing uh, where you jerk each other off? Circle jerk. Circle, Circle jerk. jerk. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. This I know that way. very well. <laughs> it's like the double Dutch rudder. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, about your book. So it's called Chaos Company, right? Yes, uh, I published a book called Chaos Company uh, a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, the elevator pitch for it is a team of superpowered soldiers hunting down a very dangerous, uh, very personality-wise, a very magnetic superpowered mercenary and he's just a sociopath uh who gets paid to basically turn the united states upside down okay and these people they aren't tasked with hunting them down but they have personal reason to hunt this guy down 
and try to foil his plan. I've gotten some reviews online that people love the villain. They just love how like how magnetic his personality is, how crazy he is. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to write. And a little bit of backstory on the book. I actually uh, I had a release self-published a couple years ago. And then uh, around that time, I got a, a contract with a small uh, company in California, Santa Clara, California. And unfortunately, they shelved my work. So I was working on other stuff. They put that book on the shelf for whatever reasons, constantly working on it. And it wasn't until two months ago I, get, I hear back from them. Um, which, by the way, when, when someone picks up your uh, your book and you get a contract, you get a, I had a four-book deal with them. When mm-hmm. you get something like that as a writer, someone that, you know, that, uh, any type of struggling artist, when someone believes in your work and they sign you, you know, it's, it's like it's like you're able to breathe again. Because when you go into something artistically, oh, you know, yeah, you're there, yeah. you're stuck there, and you, you're, you're always working through it, and sometimes you feel alone. So when someone signs you, it's, it's, it's kind of like you're being revitalized with energy, yeah, you know, just, yeah. it, it motivates yeah. you to keep going, do more stuff. Totally. So it's, it's like, and, I mean, we do that with the podcast here, you know, it's where you just start it and you just do it and you just hope that it's well received. Exactly. You, all you can mm. do is hope. And then when somebody actually takes the time and looks at it and listens to it and just says, I watched it and, or I listened to it or I read it, like you're doing good. Yeah. It, it totally validates you. And you're like, okay, Ex- like all this, this time, this effort. This just unnecessary amount of effort and time that I put into this and thought that I'm obsessed over. Somebody like somebody said my name out loud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You, you want someone to you know either take something from it or enjoy it. Totally. You know. So um, I I, I felt I felt uh it was great when I got that contract, but unfortunately two months ago I got released from that contract. Didn't tell me why. Just said uh, they're going to release it. Um. So that, that means that they let you go. They let me go. They let me gotcha. go completely. I thought, hey, let me uh, see if I can find another deal. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go to sleep until I found another deal. I found another deal Jeez. two two days later. Another <laughs> company, a competing company, but um, their contract was not anywhere as good as the contract that I used to have. It was mm. very, it was bad. It was almost as if I might as well do it on my own. And after I, I had that contract, uh, right next to my bed, on my on my nightstand for about a week, I told myself, I told them, I'm gonna I'm gonna go at this alone. Wow. I appreciate it, but I'll, I'll go at this alone if that's how if that's the type of contract I, I'm gonna get if it's just you guys are publishing it and you just put your name on it you're not gonna really work at it you know promote it then I'm not gonna work with you so I did yeah. it I did it on my own I put the book back up uh, all the reviews I got from a couple of years ago I made sure I post them back up so from the Amazon site and Goodreads they're all back online now and as of uh, five days ago I had a week long promotion where the book was free to download nice um. Mm-hmm. Got I got a great reception from that. I was actually passing out cards where I work. <laughs> I, I uh-huh. drive for Uber and Lyft, which is great. So I, I see new people all the time. It was great. Oh yeah, so you just get to talk to people and just exactly that's a great promotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was we great. Become Lyft drivers. We'll promote the podcast. Yeah. Let's oh, do definitely. It. You guys should. So yeah, I, I did that. And um, as of Friday night around midnight, the free promotion closed. I just got a thousand downloads before it closed holy shit the the goal was to get 500 and to get a thousand was just great. wow that's fucking awesome um now it's bumped up to five dollars but mm-hmm. um you know before anyone makes a purchase there is a free chapter online that you can uh read before you like it or before you before you buy it and the first chapter is all about the bad guy everyone loves the bad guy oh yeah uh um, everyone loves a good villain everyone loves a good villain yeah, yeah. that's what really makes a story a really good antagonist oh yeah, oh, yeah. It will really drive the story forward yeah mm-hmm. Because that's all it is. It's the struggle between the hero and the, and the antagonist. Exactly. And the hero can only be as good as the antagonist is as bad. Exactly. Exactly. And um, I, I think that antagonist, uh, Liam King, by the way, hopefully becomes a household villain name. <laughs> um, Liam King uh, justifies the a six man team to take him on. Which, by the way, the six man team also composes of two women who are badasses. Just there's no damsel in distresses in this book. Mm. Um, there's two. Two badass women that help feminist the other friendly. Four this men. book is. It, it is. <laughs> Even the president in the book is a woman who Ooh, also pulls out nice. a gun and gets gets uh gets a little dirty. Gets a little dirty. Gets in the fight as well. So gets a little dirt on her knees. Yeah, a little dirt, a little blow on her hands. <laughs> well, there goes the feminist. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there <Yeah>. we go. <laughs> some would say, uh, some say it reads like a video game, which is I haven't heard before of mm. any other book. You know, you read it and you feel like. Uh, my cover artist, who I let read it before she made me a cover artist, she was like, do you play Metal Gear Solid? <laughs> I was like, yeah. She's like, this kind of reads like that, not in the complexity of it, right. just how much action is in it. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, we read the first chapter before we had you on, and, and I, I say something similar. I thought it read like almost like a James Bond screenplay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate That's that. That's what I thought it was. 
Yeah, I'd have, I'd have to go with that as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I, I just wanted to ask you. Yeah. You know, you you were saying, you know, Liam is, you know, the sociopath. How do you how do you get into that character's mood? Like, what what kind of mindset do you, do you put into when um, creating Liam as a character? I think it's because of where I was in life at that point. Mm. Um, I was on my last year of college. I was also working at a mental health facility. Oh. So I saw a lot of different personalities, wow. a lot of uh, angry people, a lot of upset people. A narcissist, he was my favorite. That was great to see him come in and, uh, you know, read through notes and stuff like that. So um, I think working at that mental health facility really helped me uh, get into the mindset of someone like Liam. Also, just being a senior in college, you don't know what's coming up next. You're kind of scared. You're kind of angry that right. you don't have everything set. You know, you, you just don't know. Uh-huh. And that and that not knowing to the next part of your life can lead to a little bit of anger. I was a little bit upset and angry. I was like, I don't know what's coming next. Right. Oh, you yeah. know, even though I have that job, I was like, I don't. I, I honestly don't know what comes next once I, you know, grab that degree and I walk out those doors. Uh-huh. So it really helped me set up. Uh, it really helped me build upon this character. Mm. Um, he is angry, but he is angry, but he takes it all in strides. He's also a narcissist, like the guy <laughs> I used to I used to uh, check in at, at the health facility. He's um he's a lot of things. He's angry. He's narcissistic. Um, he takes pride in what he does. Mm. I don't. I, I don't think uh, that's touched on enough in I mean, a lot of stories about villains. Sorry to cut you off. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. I was gonna say. You know what it kind of reminds me of is almost like a Jack Nicholson way of acting, where he's very angry, but he's also very dynamic. I'm not saying that your character sounds like seems like Jack Nicholson, but he has that same dynamic range to him. Yeah. Uh, there's so many villains that. I always think of like Disney villains where they're just bad to be bad, like Scar. Exactly. Like, I don't understand why Scar yeah. is doing what he's doing. He's just a bad guy, and yeah. that's just the story. Where when you have someone who is a narcissist, and you someone that you have that uh, that has that those different levels to them, I think it really, really brings out the character. It makes it more believable, and I think it makes. Uh, I think it's really interesting the way to do with a narcissist like your main villain. Thank Honestly, you. I think Appreciate your main it. villain. He seems like the main character of the book, if I might say. I haven't read the rest of the book. We only got the first chapter, but. But I think that, I think he seems like one of the most interesting characters. Thank you. Well, I, I when I when I started writing, I don't want it to be like you just see the heroes all the time. A lot of books I I reference to for writing my own book, I saw that all the time. Mm. You get the hero's perspective all the time, no matter what type of story it mm. is—a uh, screenplay, movie, book, video game. You got the hero. You see the hero all the time. You see the villain about twenty percent of the time. Yeah. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to split that in half. Uh, 50-50 from the good guy's perspective and the bad guy's perspective. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes the, the villain more human. Mm-hmm. Like you said, uh, being bad just to be bad isn't realistic. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not going to be entertaining at all. Mm-hmm. If you can sympathize with a person, even though you know at the end of the day they're wrong, oh, yeah. I think it's going to be a, a much more fun story. Those villains are... I, what I really enjoy is the villains, were, their motives could really rival the motives of the hero. Yeah. Like they're they're so you could side with either or and they would both in a way be justified. I even think I said this on the last podcast. I think that the battle of good and evil is really just a story of perspective. Because when you see the the origins of the bad guy, if he is a dynamic bad guy, you see where that turn happened. Mm. Where he could have been the hero but then just something happened. Now he's doing something for a cause that he believes in, which is the same thing that the, that the hero is doing. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, the the lines, like you said, it's all about perspective, and it always uh, there's always a gray area, it always blurs. I think the difference between um, any story between heroes and villains is what is the hero willing to do, be a hero and get get his point across, and what lines is uh, he's not willing to cross. Which like I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the difference between a hero and a villain is a hero stops at that line, while a villain will always, well, not always, but you know, most of the time, step over that line and get what they want. Mm-hmm. I think that's the boundary. difference. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So let me ask you this: So when uh, <laughs> do you drink when you write? Sometimes, not all the time. Really? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people, especially when it comes to like music and writing, they think like drinking or drugs. You know, a little bit of pot, a little bit of coke, uh, a little bit of whiskey. Helps, right? Now we know what you're into. Yeah, all, all, all of them at the same <laughs> Send time. Send your gifts too. Yep. I pour my weed and my coke and my whiskey and I stir it up. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to come up with a clever name for that. Um, um, so, what's your drink of choice when you're when you're when you're drinking? And I usually have a vodka soda, vodka light, soda? light vodka soda, just one. Um, nice. I think there's a there's a little misconception about that. You know, drinking and or doing whatever you need to do to uh, have like an alcohol or drug yeah. to be your muse. Mm-hmm. 
At times, I think it's bullshit to, to drink while you while you make something creative. At times, yeah, but it can calm the nerves. He says while he's downing a drink. Oh, yeah. At times, it can, it can calm your nerves, good keep stuff. you a little focused, but I think too much of it. And, like, you can be so drunk and you think, oh, that's a great idea. It's like, no, your threshold for a good idea is just lower That's now. most drinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it becomes a good idea when you're drinking. Uh-huh. Exactly. That's- you think you got more. Me, I think I'm a better, uh, I'm better at reading. Like, I was in a yep. second in Charles. I was kind of fucked up. Don't ask why. <laughs> and I was like, the complete works of William Shakespeare. Fuck yeah! And I bought it. Oh, oh man. Because <laughs> I I'm, I think I have way more patience uh, than myself when I'm drinking. What about... Okay, so let's... I want to get into the life of Chris here. All right. So there you are. You got your vodka, your soda. You're writing away. You end it. You're like, that's enough writing for a day. What pornographic website do you go on first? Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like the guy who did my polygraph a couple months ago. <laughs> I tried that for the police force and he did my polygraph. He was like, you watch porn? I'm like, yeah. He's like, everyone does. I want to make sure you didn't lie. <laughs> I was like, all right. That's, that's fair. That's awesome. I wish I had that job. I'd yeah. just fuck with people. With um, X videos. X videos? Yes. Oh, Xvideos.com. Solid. Favorite X-videos. website. That's uh, all I need. What about you, Jim? What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your go-to of choice? Uh, X and XX. I like that one too. Uh huh. I think I was able to show you that. I I showed you that one. Maybe you showed me that because I we showed one. each other. As weird as that sounds, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very weird. <laughs> Tell me what you like about this video. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think we're just about uh, time to wrap up here, but I want to leave you all with a fun fact: that worms have five hearts, but nobody to love. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. <laughs> And that's that. That's the podcast. That's it. <laughs> that was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Woo! We forgot the plug. What's the plug? Uh, the book. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> oh, fuck. Book. Okay. Well, the good thing is, is that that doesn't have to be linear. So um, so where people, where can people find your book? Right now, people can find my book at uh, Amazon.com. Uh, just search Chaos Company. It's the one with the badass cover. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You can get it as a ebook if, you, if people like e-reading. And you can also get it as a paperback. And hopefully, um, we can get it in stores soon. Hopefully, by the end of the year. Oh, that's in stores. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So, Chaos Company is now available on Amazon.com. Go check it out. Support our local people here in Delaware making fun stuff. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Mm